Okay, so this is part two. Uh, we're going to be discussing mental health. Now, it's not, we're not going to be talking about mental health disorders and things like that. This is about your perception and your motivation and information, how you perceive uh, danger and fears and, and how that affects your well-being. So this is the second portion of my presentation. The first was really just an intro, but this, I believe this is going to be the, the biggest portion because it's almost like PTSD, right? I mean, we are living in, in, a, in a time where we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, even today. New, the news cycle is a 24-7 cycle. We're constantly getting new information, and we don't know what's true, what's not. There's just this huge mass of, of constant flow of information. And unfortunately, a lot of it's very negative, right? We're perceiving it as, as, as fear. Uh, obviously, the media has just blown this stuff out of proportion for good and bad. I mean, there's definitely a lot of media sources trying to get the right information out, but it's also clouded by people's opinions. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is opinions versus facts. I'm trying not to politicize anything. I know everything these days can be politicized, but we want to keep this direct and fact-based, and I'm a man of science, so I always rely back on that kind of stuff. All right, so we're going to talk about your mental health during this 2020. So number one, change is difficult, right? Changing your job, losing your job, moving, uh, death of a family member. These are things that are, I think, accelerated in this, in this cycle of 2020. So change is a difficult thing. We have our, our norms that we're comfortable in doing. We are, you know, go to work, we have this routine. Routines have been out the window. So that is, it's very difficult to deal with that and, and modify your behavior because we're, you know, creatures of habit. We do the same thing repetitively, whether it's good, good or bad over time. And now that we don't have that, we've had this just stop and this break. It's just, it's a bizarre situation to be in. So I hope everyone is healthy at this point and hopefully things are going to turn around, but we're still in the midst of, of this whole pandemic. And there's been progress, but we're not seeing a ton of it right now on a day-to-day -day basis. So hopefully you're, you're taking you know, care of yourself and your family as much as possible. So the most recent statistic, I've had to change this uh, uh, presentation a couple times because things keep changing. So as of the last time I, I looked, there was over 203,000 U.S. deaths attributed to COVID. Now, there were some reports saying that you know only a small percentage of them were just based on COVID, but that's because Americans have a lot of pre-existing health conditions, which create you know an easier easier path for COVID to take over and unfortunately take your life. So on people de on people's death certificates, it doesn't usually just say one thing. There's many pre-existing things that go into that death certificate. So yes, there may have been something like. 6% that were just COVID, but many more people have perished from this because they have other issues. And again, in the previous video, I talked about Americans and obesity. That's one factor that the U.S. had above most other countries, is that the U.S. has the most obese people, okay? We're much more sedentary. We don't take care of our health as much. And it's something that we can't immediately change, right? You can't immediately go from being obese to being fit, it takes time, so it's a chronic thing. It takes time for it to change. So that was the one factor that, that for the U.S. really affected our death rate. Now obviously there's been, I don't know exactly the number right now, of how many people have tested positive, but I'm sure there's way more than that that have been positive, that didn't get tested. So hopefully if you are in the risk category, a uh, high risk category, that you've been tested, you've been safe, and you've been using every measure possible you can to protect yourself. But even if you do all those measures, the amount of fear and the mental anguish that you can experience from this is overwhelming. So rates of depression and addiction are all on the rise. So these are things that we really need to deal with because again, I, I consider this to be like a PTSD type situation and that we really need to take care of our mental health and use our support, support team uh, to, to kind of get through this. So domestic violence is up, suicide rates are up, protests, civil unrest, I mean, everything we see on the news are just, there's just one thing after another, right? I mean, it's, it's just, it's very overwhelming. So from a mental perspective, we have to really do as much as we can 
to deal with that and then the others will follow. So again, the chemical side and the physical side I'll get to after, but this is, is key. So your motivation, your mindset, how you're going to approach things, these are all things that we can control. But if, if you're watching the media or listening to the media, there's always just a constant flow of negative negativity. So CNN, constant negative network, that's, that's been a pretty common thing um, because people feed on that kind of stuff, right? Uh, obviously, with, with all the stuff, the economic collapse as well, people losing their jobs. Um, this was, our all-time high was April of 2020, which is 14.7% unemployment. That's an all-time high, and obviously, if, if you can't go to work and can't pay your bills and you get a small stimulus check to help you out, there's, who knows where things are going to go. Um, it's just a lot of uncertainty in 2020, and these are things that that weigh heavily on us. People aren't sleeping well. People are, are, their judgment is clouded. So these are things that obviously the conflicts all around the country are, are tremendous at this point. So the more we can focus on mental health and, and improving that, the better off we're gonna be. So this was an interesting uh, diagram I found from the NCAA, Sports Science Institute, which is basically mental health and daily strategies to try to help you cope with what's going on in 2020. So number one, let's talk about workspace. Uh, as a measure to really help reduce the spread, a lot of people have had to, to resort to having a home-based office, which might be, you know, there's pros and cons to everything, but for the most part, from breaking your routine to going to an office, getting up, getting dressed, getting breakfast, going to office, working with your coworkers, this was what we were used to. Now having a home-based workspace has a lot more challenges to it. I have four young kids. Having a home-based workspace is difficult because they were not in school for a large portion of that. So anyone that's a parent, I can sympathize with that. Uh, but having a work, home-based workspace, you know, away from you know, your kitchen table, whatever, that is very important. So that is your home office. Obviously some people had a home office, but I don't think they used it to this extent prior to this time. Uh, having a routine. For a while, I didn't remember what the day was or date because everything just seemed like it was Groundhog Day, right? So unless you have something set into your schedule or using a schedule to schedule activities and things, one day to the next didn't really seem to be different. Activity, okay? That's obviously I'm a health coach. I did tons of health and fitness over the years. Activity was a huge thing. If you have a home-based office, you don't have to leave the, the, your home to go to your office. You're not going to be as active. People were avoiding being outdoors because they were afraid of interacting with other people and what other people touched. So activity levels dropped. And whenever activity levels drop, we can't get rid of stress. Right? Stress is something that, especially chronic stress, which happens over time, we need to, to work that out, get rid of it. So activity is essential for that, which will be one of my later full presentations on activity. Um, time and energy management, right? So time will fly by, especially if you're on social media or distracted, if you want to fly by. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't manage their time well, and they say they don't have a lot of time. Well, this pandemic has given us a lot more time. And unfortunately, a lot of that time has been spent you know, binge watching shows and trying to pass the time, hopefully to get to the point where we're back to normal. But again, there's not going to be the old normal. There's going to be a new normal after this point. So time and energy management, I think a lot of people are also very mentally and physically spent. You know, that just the amount of energy spent on thinking about mortality and, and what's going on in the world is, is very taxing on our systems. Uh, so that's, that's a key. Accessibility, obviously, we can find anything we want on the internet, information, good and bad. Having access to quality information is very important, and unfortunately, it's, it's, it's hard to, to navigate which, which direction you want to go. Because a lot of things, again, have been very politicized, and I try to stay away from that and just give correct information that people can make their own judgments on. Uh, Connectivity, that is a big, huge portion of this. The whole social distancing, not being able to be around your family members, especially family members that 
that uh, luckily I haven't had this happen yet, but I know some people whose family members passed away because of this, and they weren't able to see them before they passed. They uh, they weren't able to have funerals. They didn't they didn't get to spend time with their loved ones, which is very unfortunate. But that's what this time is called for. So there's been a lot of change in terms of the way that we used to do things that are, are very foreign to us. So connectivity is very important. Obviously, we have Zoom and all these things, but that that interaction between you and you know a loved one or a family member is very important because that's that's we're social creatures. We we function best by being around others. Research has shown that the more isolated you are, the lower your quality of life. So that's very important. And again, that's, I think, one of the biggest long-term effects of this is just that detachment from our social networks. Not social media. That's a whole different thing we'll get into. Uh, so again, support. Having other people support you, which is, uh, or, sorry, resources. So having the resources uh, to money, right? I mean, people need money for supplies, and luckily there wasn't that much gouging for supplies, but obviously there were all these shortages from toilet paper where everything started, which was kind of comical, uh, to obviously when you go to a grocery store, things were rationed. You could only buy a certain amount of things. Uh, you know, I don't, I've never been in any time where I went to a grocery store and like the shelves were bare, and that, that was a common occurrence for certain products. Uh, one thing that personally that I had had experience with is I, we were looking to maybe try making some bread because it's hard to get a lot of bread and we have a family of six. And finding yeast at a grocery store was virtually impossible. Even finding it online, couldn't find it on Amazon, it was sold out because people were going back to their roots and trying to do more on their, for themselves. So that, that to me was a, a, a bright light in this, that people started resorting to things that, that maybe their grandparents or parents did to, you know, provide for the family. Those are keys that, you know, again, going back to this whole survival mode, people, you know, you're, it's, it's all about survival. So you'll, you'll find ways to do things, right? So that's, that's a, a crucial component that I think has been a shining light in all this. And again, it's through that support of others and Obviously, there's been tons of helpful videos on how to, you know, how to cook, right? People had to cook more, which, which we hadn't done that much. So they had to prepare things. They had to, to find ways to make things work when they didn't have everything they needed. Obviously, restaurants started shutting down, and then they quit pretty quickly shifted to curbside pickup. So restaurants that never had that before had to, you know, innovate and change that pretty quick. So that that was. Some, some great things that happened through this. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is, unfortunately, in this day and age, people's opinions are greater than facts. So that's something I believe that social media really has developed, in that if you believe in something, whether there's facts to it or not, and you post it out there and someone else likes it or agrees with it or whatever, that, that justifies your, your opinion or your thought. But unfortunately, when that comes to you know, guiding people through a pandemic and things like that, that can get very sticky, uh, especially if you're trying to sway someone's opinion to buy your product or support you or whatever you're looking to do. There's, there's ulterior motives to all these things. So unfortunately, we've bred this culture of fear, okay? Fear of the unknown is, is very powerful, but culture of fear in that we're seeing all this, you know, breakdown of society through through the pandemic through now all these you know uh, riots and, and marches and I mean there's there's pros and cons to all that stuff and unfortunately a lot of times we see the negative we don't see the positive coming out of a lot of, a lot of that so we have this 24 7 news cycle and the main thing is one thing we have that's different from animals is that we we have empathy if we see someone on a video going through something we can feel that Animals don't have that same response. So that's one thing that kind of separates humans from animals is that we can put ourselves there. We have that gut feeling of, geez, I can imagine myself being in that position. I mean, if you look at the videos that are most watched from people falling to car accidents to, you know, dumpster fires, those are the kind of things that, that, that are visceral with humans that, that change the way that we, you know, feel 
right? So we can feel, if someone falls, we feel, oh, geez, I would, I, they could, you can imagine yourself going through that. So that's kind of the power of video and images is that we, we, we see that and we feel that. So that's why it's very, you know, humans are very much um, regulated by body language. We see more than we hear. So when you're seeing these things happen, people being hit by cars in these protests, that's, that's disheartening. You could imagine you or a family member being there and going through that. So that's, that's unfortunately a lot of the negative power of what I, can, I call unsocial media, right? It's the reverse of, of really being social. You're not social when you're sitting on your phone and there's a room full of people on their phones not interacting. That's not natural. That, that's a... That's a technological, you know, reversal. So we're going backwards. We're not, you know, young kids nowadays have issues just communicating. So these are things, especially during this time, we need to be working with others and getting that human connection. Uh, obviously, our mortality is a huge part of this, right? I mean, there's people dying left and right from all different things. So these are our fears that we have, and I'm sure you know someone that's this passed away, whether from COVID or something related to current events, it's, it's very challenging to, to navigate these times. Okay, so we talk about mental health support. So how can you help support your mental health? Again, we talked about a culture of fear, trying to get that, that fear, which is real, it's not made up, out of your head is very, very difficult. What is not politicized these days, there's not much out there that is not. Your own mortality is, you know, we young people. Obviously, there's a lot large, larger percentage of seniors and people with pre-existing conditions passing away from COVID. But, you know, outside of that, the, the especially the American population is having a lot more problems with cancers and heart disease. And, and if you take that into account, the people that are already battling those illnesses, and then you add COVID to that, and just the amount of just of negativity going into that, it's very difficult to to look at your own mortality and say, you know, I should be fine. So, hopefully, you know, our our next generations are going to be healthier, and we can do more. And and right now, maybe this is going to make you focus more on your health, so you can help others and just stay alive as long as you possibly can. Uh, but you know, there is a big motivation motivational drain, right? I mean, it's it's work, work out exercise, planning, these all take a lot of, of mental energy. And a lot of us, it, we're already drained from that. Uh, I, I talk a lot about uh, unplugging and reconnecting. So unplugging meaning getting off social media, don't watch TV, don't listen to radio, just, just unplug for a while. And reconnect with the things like, excuse me, the outdoors, right? Just get outside. Don't think about what's going on in the world for a short time and just take a break. Uh, it's also known as what's called a media fast. So you're getting away from media. You're getting away from, from everything that's going on in the world. I know obviously we, we want to be as involved as we can with helping mold what's going on, but there's a lot of time you just need to unplug. And by watching a movie or something like that, that's, that's just getting away from things. Not having things fed to you through your eyes and ears, but just go outside. Let you know, go for a walk. There's tons of parks in New York State that are phenomenal. Um, obviously, people haven't had a lot of opportunity to travel this year because of all the travel bans and just trying to keep things, you know, local is important, but there are a ton of local things. Uh, my family and I went to a bunch of local parks we hadn't been to just to get outside um, because we were kind of cooped up in, in, our, in our yard and things like that. So getting back to that kind of stuff is very important and very, you know, important for your well-being, both mentally and physically. Um, obviously, fresh air does go a long way. So, building a social support team. Who would you want to have on your team? Okay, so obviously you have your, your significant other, your kids, your family, your neighbors, co-workers. Everyone's involved in this. So getting other people's perspectives and stories are very important, but you need to build this team of, of who's going to be working with you. Right? Because you can't approach this on your own. It's basically impossible to, to be your own person without interacting with others. And it's just, it's not healthy. Right? So you are not alone in this fight. You have to build a network of people that will work with you. 
Now, obviously, not everyone's going to agree with you, and there's not, you know, there's a lot of obviously political strife right now. And trying to avoid a lot of that, in addition to the pandemic, is is difficult. Hopefully, you know, things clear up a bit with this pandemic, and we can go back to all the normal, you know, stress that we usually have. But it is what it is. So building this team is very important to develop, you know, to improve your mental health. So the summary for this is really what I would tell people to do is go on a media fast, all right? Try to avoid media for a certain amount of time. It doesn't have to be the whole day. It could be a couple hours that you just get away and do things. It's very important for your well-being, and it's something that we really all require, even away from this pandemic thing. I mean, people used to go to the gym and socialize and exercise. You can't do that. So there's all these can't do this, can't do that. you got to find something else. Find something else you can get involved in. Uh, building a support team, okay? So who are the people around you that can help you? Or if they're, they need you, you're there for them, right? So that's what a team is for. It's not about one person. There's no I in team. Questioning the source of information is very important. There's a lot of things, especially on social media, where people share information that is not factual. So unfortunately, a lot of people share it like, oh, that makes sense, I'm gonna share it again. And something builds up that if you look at the initial information, it was incorrect. And that's unfortunately, I'm sure that people have gotten into trouble by, by doing the wrong thing. I mean, we've heard some of these just outrageous things that people have, have come up with as ways to, you know, kill COVID or, or heal from it. I mean, a lot of it's, it's not factual. So that's a big part of one, one, one portion of this presentation about the chemical side is what kind of things can you eat or do to boost your own immune system? So I'm a big believer in, in uh, nutrient therapy, uh, vitamins and things like that. And it's just things, I mean, basically, everyone, a lot of scientists that I've read and, and pretty much all of it, basically your immune system is what gets rid of this. It's not a drug, it's not some alternate therapy, it's basically your immune system. So the more you can support your immune system, the necessary nutrients you need, the fresh air, I mean, all that stuff is, is the way you're gonna heal. So hopefully all this, this research comes together, you know, and, and people can get on the same page. There's definitely not gonna be everyone on the same page in believing this versus that, but hopefully everyone makes it through, whether they make the right decisions or not, to, you know, to, to support their wellness. So I hope this is, uh, this information was good to, to kind of give you a perspective on how to perceive this pandemic and how to get through it. And again, there'll be handouts with this as well. And then each of the next four parts are going to be building on these, these points I've built up. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'll leave my contact information. But I hope everyone is well, and hopefully 2021 is going to be much better. Thank you very much.